if you operate in a certain space and for example that the only type of work that is coming from a pool of people is here if somebody wants something that is here then they'll keep going elsewhere to find it so it's up to us who are in this space here to aspire always to do i don't know how to call it you know don't be comfortable within a space because there's no one else doing much more always keep pushing the bar I mean, no film is the same. Um, and you cannot say that one is easier than the other because they both, or they all have their own different attitudes. It's like children. You know, you can't say it was easier uh, raising this one than the other, you know? Because they're both unique in their own way. Of course, Nairobi Half-Life was the most challenging because it was my first time directing. It was a big film. And I was navigating, you know, um, having not ever done a film before. So I've been thrown in the deep end and I've got to learn on my feet. Um, but I've, I followed a lot of my instincts and that really helps, you know. The stuff that I totally felt and believed in and I fought for. Of course, the producers were also, you know, watching me closely because it's my first time. You know, am I going to make the right decisions or not? So it's all that playing around with your head and also you thinking, am I making the right decision or not? So those challenges came with that film. You still feel them in the next film you do and the next and the next and the next. I mean, you may have done a hundred films, but you still feel every time, you know, like, am I doing the right thing? Because creating stuff from scratch is not easy. It's a hard brief, you know, Tasca has always done memorable adverts, you know? Um, it's showcased the country uh, in a beautiful way. Uh, the last one having been a few years ago. So now, we had a brief of how do we blend, um, and also the consumer. So we're talking about uh, consumers of Tasca who have been there for years. And then we also want to talk to the young generation coming up because, I mean, as you, you can't stay with your same consumer, see, when I die, you know? So you need to also talk to the ones coming up. So how to blend the two, so that you're talking to the upcoming young guys and you're still talking to the diehard people who have nostalgic um, uh, memories of what Tasca is. So for me, that was the most unique thing and how to, you know, make sure it blends and still keep, you know, the essence of, of both was quite uh, a unique thing for me. So you have to pitch to the director and the director has to create a treatment of what they're going to do with our script and how they're going to tell the story. So again, so the, the work starts from here and you sit down and you think things through and you write down, a, I think my treatment was about 70 pages. Yeah, so I, I'm young directors out there, it's not easy. Don't just see me here and then you think it's, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you put down your ideas you put references, you put the tone, you put the feel, you know, you show the client, this is the film you're going to make. And so when you present, um, they can see it. Fortunately, my, my treatment was good enough. And I think I was also competing against some international directors. So it's, it's a big deal for me um, to be able to play in the same space and um, clean such an important project. Everybody who was involved was dealing with their own fires in their own way, you know. We had the agency, we had the creatives who had worked on this pitch back and forth, you know, where a client is like, not yet, not yet, you know. Them, you know, finally getting there to get it filmed. 
the client service also, you know, uh, the manager, Sally, who was hands-on the whole time uh, with Christine, also handling the client and the back and forth and the questions and pushing, you know, because I'm also pushing the client to give feedback because I'm also having pressure on this side, you know, so there was all that. Not to forget that guy driving that combi, um, carrying that combi. You know, all the guys who, when there was disaster, were dealing in the middle of the night. You know, guys were sleeping. I mean, we were, by the time the last person got home, it was like midnight or something. And by 3 a.m., everybody's up and on the move. So it's, and that's what I love about film. You know, you cannot say it's one or two people. Um, at the end of the day, if I didn't have that combi up there, I wouldn't have that shot, you know? So I'm grateful to the guy who gets that combi up there. If I don't have the person feeding everybody who's working so hard, you know, people don't get the job done. So film is a collaboration and everybody who gets together to do it just brings everything on the table. So I always refrain from saying this one or that one because I believe everybody is super important. So it was quite hectic because we had to move. We had two combis, you know, so the combis are, uh, are old. So you can't risk driving them all these places. And then, you know, you're ready to shoot at sun, sunrise and combi aiku fika jana. So we had to put them on flatbed, move, you know, it's a whole lot of coordination. And there's a shot on the top of a hill. That hill was hard to get to. Uh, at one point, one of the combis dropped the engine going up that hill. And it was at like 6 p.m. It's crazy. You know, you can't see anything. What do you do? You know, so we had to leave it up there and deal with it the following day. So the behind the scenes are crazy. You know, the stuff that happens, you see the shot is a second only, but what we have gone through to get that one second is, is um, insane. But at the end of the day, it's all about doing better. For me, really, it's always about showcasing what we as Kenyans can do. That's my, my biggest gratification, that we are able, that we can do great things. So when such a film comes from us, then it feels really good. You can watch the same film, you hate it, and I love it. It doesn't mean that you you're wrong or I'm right, you know? At the end of the day, is how we perceive things. It's how we pick on things. So then it becomes very tricky for a creative process. So you normally have to really dwell on the fundamentals of filmmaking and what the rules are. And I use that a lot, you know? So I've, I've come to find a way of balancing. If a client is asking for something, if it falls off these rules, then I will explain. And I'll say, if you do that, then this will happen. And then you're gonna lose this and that. So then it's a choice you have to make. At the end of the day, you're the client. It's a choice you have to make. And most of the time, they, you know, it's all up on the approach. You know, how you approach something and make them understand because you understand it better. And for us, those fundamentals are super important. You know, following the arc of the story, uh, the beginning, the middle, and the end. Those are rules of film since time immemorial. If you don't have them in your story, your story will not make sense. It's, there's no two ways about it. So usually I try to educate and explain to the clients what the rules are. And then sometimes you find there's a preference that is heavy and deep. And so I have to make a choice, you know, to let go. But we have this thing where we call director's cut. So this, this is for the, you know, because at the end of the day, your client is looking at what are the pointers from their research. This has to be in the film because we're talking to a certain person because of this and that. I think it's easily the biggest ad I've ever done. It's a thematic, um, it was going around the whole country. Um, I was filming with uh, one of the best DOPs in the world. Not easy to find them. Um, so there's also that pressure, you know, 
like who are you to tell such a person what to do and how you want the shot to be tasker also they have not shot a thematic in four years you know this is a big deal for them there's a transition time also for them from they need to talk to their usual customers they need to at the same time talk to the younger generation and say we are also for you so it's all that pressure you know and it's at the back of your mind but you you can almost not be able to move if you keep thinking about so you just believe in yourself and believe in the vision that you have and you just go for it